2016 Nissan Altima complaining about loss of power, loss of acceleration, and possibly the brake lights staying on. Uh, this is a very, very intermittent problem. Uh, multiple brake switches have been put in this car, probably readjusted. Um, I think the problem is it's just never been really duplicated. Uh, it's no doubt if you've been around Nissan, we do have brake switch issues. So somebody, somebody may have just picked the low-hanging fruit and tried to get this thing figured out. But basically that whole paragraph of stuff is telling me what I kind of just told you guys. So what I'm doing, I've got the uh, Zeus, Snap-on Zeus. I, I love the graphing and the data acquisition. Uh, to me, it's a little nicer than what the consult has to offer. So... I got brake switch one, brake switch two, and brake switch. Um, I got a feeling these are just redundant PIDs, but the brake pedal has two of them on it. One they call brake position, and then the other one is for the lights. Uh, what I do know is when one is on, the other two should be off. So I'm gonna hit the brake and see how everything's switched and uh, everything's back to off. So I'm gonna start driving this thing. I need to duplicate it. And I want to verify that the brake lights are staying on and then we will come up with a strategy to try to figure this thing out and get the right part put on it. So um, wish me luck and I think patience is going to be my number one issue for the day because it's hot and I've got to spend a lot of time driving this car. And the AC doesn't work that well. So another day in the office. Alright, so as luck would have it, um, I'm drifting down the road here. I've got the car in neutral everything is on 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 so the car is actually acting up right now i don't want to take i don't want to touch the brake pedal so i'm going to try to get this thing i'm going to try to push the parking brake and get this thing slowed down uh if i'm afraid if i touch the brake pedal it's going to fix itself so i need to get out of this car i got to get this thing loaded down and um let me see here there's a good spot and uh let me see i got it in neutral we're almost stopped Okay, now I'm stopped. I'm going to get out real quick and see if the parking brakes are on, or the uh, brake lights are on, so hang on. All right, guys, it's bright as hell out here. The brake, third brake light is on. Uh, obviously, I'm not in the car. The brake light is on. Uh, actually, they're all on, but I don't think you can see those. You might be able to see it. So, um, all right, I got to get this thing back to the shop and figure out whether I got a brake switch sticking. I've actually pulled back on the brake switches and manipulated them. Um, nothing's changing. So the system has a relay in it. Also a ton of wiring. Uh, see a little bit of damage here. I gotta do some visual inspections and then uh, do some voltage checks. All right, so I've got the scope hooked up. Um, I'm in various places with the brake switch and the relay. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be in more places at once because the intermittency of this problem, uh, you know, so if you really have to get it to act up, Check it with a voltmeter. Get it to act up again. Check it with a voltmeter. It could take a while. So the signals don't have to be super duper fast to pull the scope out. The scope allows me to be in up to four places at one time. Um, you know, one day when I strike it big on YouTube or something, I'm going to invest in the eight channel scope. So that way I could be in eight places at one time. But I'm using three channels of the four. Um, I'll go over the wiring diagram a little bit and show you exactly where I'm hooked up, but basically I'm checking the brake switch and the relay input and output because uh, I'm looking for something that's sticking. And uh, let me see here. I'm just going to hit the brake. We're going to start it. And see, everything's behaving right now. Everything ought to change at the same time. So I'm going on another test drive and... Uh, We'll see if we can't duplicate this thing one more time and get this thing figured out there's brake on there's brake off so time to drive and watch the scope or watch the road and uh, let the scope do its thing all right so here's my hookups here I'm at the uh, brake relay and I've got the um, switch side out going to the tail lights which we've already seen that um, stick and this is from the brake switch in. This is the input. Uh, the relay is grounded, so the brake switch applies power 
to um, power up the coil, you know, to pull the contact shut. So contacts out, coil input. That's there. And then I don't think you'll be able to see, but I'm back probed into the brake switch under here. So when I push it, it just puts 12 volts out to the uh, relay out there. So those are the hookups. I'll go over it more on the paper. Intermittent issues, you gotta love them. Um, I don't know how you guys shops deal with them, but uh, they are a very frustrating part of our jobs. Uh, it's very time consuming. If you're flat rate, you very rarely, if ever, get paid for all the time you've got invested driving and testing things. Uh, it's frustrating for the technician, it's frustrating for the customer. And if you have customers that own brand new vehicles and you're dealing with a warranty situation, uh, you just can't just start hanging parts on this thing and guessing because, you know, you guess wrong too many times, then you're into a lemon law situation. Uh, so intermittent stuff is a hell for pretty much everybody. Certain scenarios we get into, you know, we'll approach a customer and say, hey, eight out of ten times, this is what fixes the car. It's about a $40 part. Uh, do you want to take a gamble if you do great if you do and it doesn't fix the car then you can't come back beating us up um, every intermittent issue I think is a is a different fight uh, there, I don't think there's a blanket answer for every issue but this particular car here I think had been towed in twice uh, I don't know the scenario how it was explained to the customer but I do know that when I come in on Monday morning, I've got an RO sitting on my desk and it's got about 300 yellow sticky notes on it. It's been towed in twice. Um, there is no time for negotiating. I've got to get the car fixed. So is the Pico scope overkill? Once upon a time, I used to think you only needed a scope for super fast signals. Anything with a duty cycle, communications, can communications, cam and crank signals. Um, use the scope for pressure stuff but as I have started using it more I realized that hey you don't need a super fast signal uh, this is the slowest signal on the planet that I'm testing here you don't need a super fast signal just to use the scope the scope is uh, my scope is a four channel scope so I have basically four voltmeters that I can deploy everywhere in the uh, circuit that I want and I'm going to see inputs, outputs in real time as they are in relation to each other. So remember that if you've got a scope, and I know all you Nissan technicians out there that work for dealers, you have a nice scope. So um, don't forget, you don't need to be just checking fast stuff to use the scope. So with this particular car, I've got four voltmeters, we'll say. I'm using three of them. And... Um, I pretty much knew what was wrong with this car, but I had to prove it. We were like strike two in the bottom of the ninth, and I really had to hit the ball hard here, uh, or else um, I was taking a risk of really pissing off my customers. So The green trace I had right here at number four, so when you push the brake switch, it applies power to the coil here. The red trace was on number two. So basically, I'm checking this wire. Uh, the relay is always grounded. And then once the contact closes, I'm at three. So I want to see the voltage out. I'm trying to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt either this switch is sticking or this relay is sticking or I'm getting some sort of a stray voltage applying this coil when this switch is not pushed or the brake pedal is not pushed. Um, it, it's only showing this going to this joint connector and to this, all these brake lights. Uh, trust me, this relay or this input goes to a lot of places on this car. Uh, that switch is used for a lot of things. Everything from the parking switch to an ECU input. Uh, uses it for the intelligent mobility. I knew from, you've seen on the video, that my brake lights were on when I was out of the car. So I knew for a fact something was sticking and using the scope let me be in three places at one time to verify 100% this problem. 
So there was my hookups. I'm glad, we, I'm glad you stuck with me this far. And I will show you the Pico scope capture very shortly. Hang on. All right, got it to act up. Uh, sitting under a tree in a parking lot here. There's a lot going on. I've saved this capture, but we'll go over it. But basically what I've got going on is I'm at the relay under the hood. I'm checking from, for power at the coil side of the relay, which is the red. So I had power come up, which energized the relay right here. So the brake lights came on. I let my foot off the brake. Power goes off. This is the relay out or the switch side of the relay. I push the brake again, power comes up. I let off the brake, power stays on, power stays on, power stays on. Right now the brake lights are on. Let me start the scope. All right, so every time the red and the green go up, that's my switch side, and then that's the coil side under the hood. Oh, it didn't stick that time. See, it's stuck right there. See, it's sticking. There, it let go. Let me put a little more time on the screen real quick because it's act, kind of acting up. So basically when everything goes up, everything should go up. When I let off the brake, the blue should drop. So right there, that relay, that's relay out. That is sticking. There is, um, there's no power going to the coil side because the relay is always grounded. The brake switch applies power, you know, to pull the switch in. So there we go four channel scope comes in handy um i tell anybody when they're looking for a scope at least buy four uh, look see it's starting to release right here a little bit i bet you my brake lights are getting dimmer and dimmer that's uh that's pretty cool to be able to see this watch one more screen here Looks like I might have froze it up. There we go. Yep. Definitely relay brake brake relay stuck. Confirmed. I'm gonna put a new relay in this car and uh, this dude will be fixed. Thank you guys for tuning in. So here's the capture real quick. Um, I only took one screen. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know what? Let's do the full screen deal. This is one cool thing about Pico 7 that I like. So you can see here the blue trace right here is the relay out. This is going to my brake lights. So it was actually stuck right here. The green and the red are basically the same wire. The green is under the uh, dash at the brake pedal so it sends power to the coil side of the relay. So the brake switch should have only been energized when these are up so it was actually stuck right here and then when I let off the brake it dropped and this is actually normal and then I hit the brakes here which it came straight up as it should have you can see everything's pretty much in a line and this is the beauty of the scope so you can see everything in relation so I hit the brake pedal the voltage gets sent to the coil side of the relay the relay turns on and sends the voltage out to the brake lights and all the other components that require the input. Well, I let off the brake here, voltage stayed high. So this is 100% confirmed. Uh, the last video you're going to see is basically a bulletin that I wish would have been researched before all of this happened, uh, but shit happens and um, I guess that's why I have a job. Intermittent stuff is tough, guys. You know it. Anybody's been in the business a long time. Uh, I was a flat rate technician for over 25 years in my career. And trying to balance making money, dealing with intermittent cars, making money, keeping my customers happy, making money, you kind of see the trend there, is tough. Uh, I've since moved on from flat rate. I get paid a day rate. Uh, I'll let you in on a little bit of my background. Uh, I've been with Nissan since the mid-90s. I uh, worked flat rate all up to about four or five years ago. I only work part-time at the dealer now. I get paid a day rate. So I can deal with these style problems 
and then let the guys in the shop that are flat rate continue to do what they need to do to make money and i'm able to take over these style jobs that would hang up somebody for hours and hours and hours so i'm thankful that the shop takes care of me in that manner uh, i have other endeavors for the rest of the week i only work there like i said part time and um I show up on Monday and sometimes I have a toolbox full of stuff and sometimes I don't have anything to do. So this happened to be there last Monday. Uh, they kind of give me free run on the jobs I'm doing and I'm able to kind of video and promote the product a little bit and come up with some good fixes. If I don't have anything to do at my shop, then that means the shop is awesome. Everybody's getting the cars fixed and I'm kind of like the Maytag man. Uh, occasionally you get cars that are kind of um, I don't know maybe enough time couldn't be spent with them you end up with stuff like this I step in hopefully I can get the cars fixed make everybody happy and uh, have some content for a nice YouTube video so I'm going to show you a copy of the T TSB at the end here and um, just remember you don't have to have a high speed signal pull that scope out you can use that scope I do it a lot of times I'm, at, I'm checking two ends of a wire the signal at the computer the signal at the sensor if there's a breakdown in the middle I'm gonna see it with the scope uh, that type of stuff it, it, it works great for that and let me tell you I always got to throw a plug in for my guys at Auto Nerds. if you don't work for Nissan and you don't already have a scope gifted to you and you need to purchase one Look those guys up. Uh, they have excellent, excellent service after the sale. And if you look in my latest video, not this one, but the NVH video, uh, Auto Nerds made a comment on a question that was asked to me. I referred it to them. And uh, there's a certain NVH kit now that can be bought that will include you in the Pico group. So I encourage you to read that if you are interested in buying an nvh kit i can't remember the name of the kit or the part number but the comment is there and obviously those guys are there to answer your phone calls emails messages however you contact them they will get back with you so as always thank you guys so much for watching the subscriber counts growing everybody's sharing and um i got like 2,000 more subscribers than i think i ever would have had so I appreciate y'all. Thank you. So we got this bulletin here. It talks about the 13 to 16 Altima low power stop lamp stays on. If you read down through it, it talks about the relay sticking, which we proved that was the issue. So this bulletin has us delete the relay and basically just put the two wires together and then put this brake switch in unfortunately this brake switch was just replaced and uh, that really wasn't the problem and if you do the relay delete then you put this one in so I'm gonna put this one in I don't know if this one's capable of carrying more current since we have gotten rid of the relay now so yeah so if you run into one of these check for your TSBs but this car had been here a few times for this problem so I wanted to go ahead and prove it out because you know the TSBs are there to help you but it's not guaranteed that every car comes in with this complaint needs this fix so uh, with this one in particular I wanted to prove everything out uh, found the relay actually sticking and now we're gonna put this switch in and get rid of this new switch I really don't know what's different on the inside obviously there's a color change but buttons a little different but who knows Anyways, kind of a long way around to get to the finish line, but we got there. Thank you for watching.